Hello everyone, Dan here from SurePT. I'm happy to report that I'm basically complete getting the shirt back in working order. So as you may remember, there was lots of issues. You can look at the other videos to kind of walk through that, but right now I do have everything apart, so I thought I could just show you uh, again the inner workings of the shirt and just kind of walk through again the finishing touches of completion of the last job so again what you're looking at right now is the driver's side of the front of the Sherp and this right here is the tensioner for the chain system that drives that front wheel when they design this, the challenge is, is this is where you steer from. So again, there's a couple of different hydraulic cylinders that are down there that are coming from that that drive the clutches in the back, also the braking system, those are right here. So that is included on this side, and it's not included in the rest of the shirt. So again, what happened is, is this sprocket here just basically bent and I replaced this entire part right here. And it's just a pain to get in there because there's very, very little room. Now, the chain, I believe, stretched so much that when I had this entire travel of this chain tensioner, the chain was still too loose. So what I did is I took out two links and I put it back together. Well, in doing that, I probably made it a little bit too short. Um, so this tensioner right here assembly is not sitting in there correctly, nor has it ever been actually since I got it from the factory. And this bolt, if I put it in here right now, as you can see, is hitting back here. So it's supposed to be in a little bit. You would think that it wouldn't be tight, right, when it's at the very beginning of the stroke, but it is because that's what I did. So what I did is I went and I got another bolt that was shorter and I put that in there. Unfortunately, right now I do not have any type of lock washer, which is stupid, um, but I gotta have something that goes wide on here on the outside. I just have not had that done yet. As you can see, if I just drive this a little bit, I might be able to tighten this all the way down to the end of the threads and that could just sit there and that is the way it is until I put a new chain on. Now this is the passenger front side chain tensioner mechanism. Much easier because they don't have all those hydraulic lines there, so they don't have to deal with that. And there's just a heck of a lot more room, and it's much simpler because this one you can push down, as you can see right there. Um, that's what keeps the chain tight going, pushing it down. It's a little bit different than the other one, and it's just much simpler. That one is just fine. Um, just while we're sitting here, what else is there to see? I think that white box there, there's fuses. I've never had to look in there, hopefully never will. Uh, that box right there is a heater core. Right down there is again where that heater comes out. Right there is that valve. And that valve is all that wrapped pipe that goes all the way back. And that valve is opening right there I think you can kind of see that and then that's redirecting that exhaust again um, to the tires I think that's all there is to see here all right we'll jump in back so on the back of the Sherp what I'm gonna do is take this thing down to a local body shop actually Jeeps which is right down the road from me um, and I'm gonna have them do a little bit of work here again so we had some damage that happened last time again when I was going up on that ice what I did is hope you can see this I was I was backing in like this way 
the ice came up and whacked in right here. And I didn't even know this occurred, but I'm confident that's what happened. It hit right here. That was, again, the ice was just acting all goofy. Um, and the reason the ice is looking all goofy on that was because it froze from that previous day and it was not something that I was used to. So what I did is I just put that white uh, duct tape on or Gorilla tape, whatever the heck it is, to just um, identify the spots that need to be pounded out a little bit. And when they get pounded out a little bit or just bent just a smidgen, this door right here is not going to stick like it is right now. So that was another piece of damage, but that really isn't a big deal that's going to happen. That was based on my stupidity, um, and I will get that fixed. And again, just what the back of the Sherp looks like. So you got the fuel tanks in the back, and that's diesel. Um, and then on this side, right there, that is where you actually fill up the oil that goes on all of the different chains. So what you're looking at there is the brushes that deliver the oil to the chains. So you got three chains right there. One of the chains actually just keeps that shaft together that actually uh, allows you to disconnect it from the main transmission source. And the other two, one, one of the chains, I guess the one on the left side goes to the rear axle, the one on the right side goes to the front axle, and that's how the passenger side is driven. That's the driver side rear, that's the passenger side rear, and the chain tensioners for these, again, are much easier, so it's right there, and it's pushing the chain up, nice and simple, there's plenty of room to work on it. Same on this side, pushing it up. You could probably see a little bit of oil and stuff down there. Yep, that's what happens. I mean, you're just taking... Again, we got that summer fan put on there. That should be all good. Uh, trying to videotape this. I don't remember if I did a video on this or not, but I'm out here doing it, so I figured I might as well show it to you. Um, this fan again, in the winter, is a huge advantage because it pulls the air through the radiator and blows it into the engine compartment. That would be a disadvantage in the summer because we want to keep it cool on the inside so you make the fan go the opposite way. Basically you take this fan off and you put one on that's basically got the fins going the exact opposite way and I'm just going to show you how I do that. Um, so I'm just going to tighten up this spring and then hopefully I should be able to pull it. There we go. Pull the uh, Um, belt off. Then, like everything with the Sherp, you got to take off a huge number of fasteners, but we like that because then there's no issues later. Not had a pleasant time recently, but honestly, what do I got going on? I got a Sherp with probably 140 hours on it. I have went through stuff that I never in a million years thought that I would ever go through. Um, and what have I really had done? So I blew the master fuse once, that was under warranty. Um, the master fuse is like the a linkage in a sense that is the first thing that comes from the engine to make sure that if any part hits some significant obstacle, it's the first thing to break. That's a good thing, right? That's smart. But unfortunately, to change that master fuse, it's not something that a typical person can do. And I've done quite a bit of stuff already that a typical person can't probably do. I don't do fixing on stuff for a living, but I can do some stuff. I did get that. Oops, sorry about that.
So that tube right there is actually the intake for the air for the engine. Engine's right down there. Again, a little one and a half liter Kubota engine. Absolutely no issues with that thing. It's always been perfect, other than starting in reverse that one time with this whole event. But that was me just not knowing what the hell I was doing. But I now I'm starting to get better and better at all this. Let's see if I can show that I just tightened up. Again, there's the Webasco heater. The heater goes down then, has two different valves. One of the valves goes and lets you take the air right into the compa engine compartment. So that's just blowing it right in the engine compartment. And the other one goes down through that opening right down there, right? And it comes out right here. And that's what this switch does right here is just manual to control that. And that's all there is to it. I'm just going to take some something, just wipe down some of this dust here on the inside. And take it to that body shop, like I said, and go from there. Thanks for watching. Look forward to getting some good videos out to everybody soon.